Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about heart attacks. So a heart attack is also known as a myocardial infarction or just MI and this is a serious medical emergency where the supply of blood to the heart muscle is blocked and this will lead to death of that tissue. So for example in this image we have one of the coronary arteries here and there is a blood clot that is blocking uh, blood flow to this area and as we can see we have death of that muscle. Now cardiovascular diseases are the number one killer in the world taking approximately 17.9 million lives each year. Now 80% of these deaths are due to heart attacks and strokes and we've discussed uh, strokes in a previous video so make sure to check that as well um, since today we're only focusing on heart attacks. So to understand heart attacks, let's first talk about the blood supply to the heart. So the heart receives blood from all over the body, uh, here in the right atrium. It is then going to pump blood to the lungs, then it will receive the blood from the lungs and pump it everywhere else in the body. But that blood that goes through the heart doesn't actually supply the heart muscle itself. What happens is, as the heart pumps blood out into the body, we have here the ascending aorta, then the aortic arch, and then the descending aorta, which is shown right there. There are two branches in the ascending aorta, which are the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. And these two will supply the heart muscle, so give that muscle oxygen and nutrients. So here we have the right coronary artery, is going to have its branches, so we have the right marginal artery and the posterior descending, um, supplying the posterior uh, portion of the heart, and it mainly supplies this like inferior border here. Then the left coronary artery has two main branches, so the left anterior descending, which is this big one down there, and its associated branches, and the left circumflex artery, which will supply there more the posterior side of the heart. And if we have a blockage in any of these arteries, we have a heart attack. And the most common one to cause a heart attack is the left anterior descending, this big one right there, which is also called the widow maker. So how do these arteries get blocked? This is often due to coronary artery atherosclerosis. So that is the formation of a lipid plaque in the coronary arteries. Uh, which is often due to high levels of cholesterol or hypercholesterolemia. Um, and we also have a video on the channel explaining atherosclerosis. If you'd like to learn it more in depth, go check that out. But um, essentially, atherosclerosis will block the blood flow of heart, will restrict that blood flow. And as the plaque grows, the bigger is the problem because uh, it can rupture, as we can see in this image and leading to a formation of a blood clot there and uh, or also known as a thrombus and if this happens there can be a complete occlusion of the artery and so the heart muscle will not receive oxygen or nutrients and it will starve so leading to myocyte death and this brings us to one of the diagnostic criteria of heart attacks and that is cardiac enzymes so as the heart muscle dies, it will spill into the bloodstream some of its constituents. And of particular importance here is troponin I and CKMB, which st stands for creatine kinase myocardial band. Here we have a graph showing uh, how these proteins rise and then fall again after uh, having a heart attack. And so, since we have cell death, cardiac cell death and necrosis in a heart attack, one of the diagnostic criteria is this elevation of troponin and CKMB, which will not be seen in other conditions such as angina. So while those cardiac enzymes are an important diagnostic criteria, in the first six hours, the ECG is the gold standard for the diagnosis of a myocardial infarction. So, here in this image, we have uh, the normal ECG wave. So we have the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. And 
There are multiple changes to this structure that can be seen in a heart attack. However, we will be focusing on the ST segment. So heart attacks can be divided as ST elevation, myocardial infarction, or as TEMI, and a non-ST elevation, myocardial infarction, or a NSTEMI. So essentially we're referring to this segment being either elevated or not elevated or even depressed. So a STEMI indicates a transmural infarct, meaning there is a full thickness of the myocardium involved. So all of it, all of this area is affected and essentially dying. And as we can see here in this uh, ECG, uh, there is ST elevation, so that segment is elevated. In an NSTEMI, on the other hand, uh, indicates a subendocardium infarct, meaning the inner one-third of the heart wall is dying. That is an area especially vulnerable to ischemia. So as you can see, only that inner area is dying. And so here's a, a, an image of an ECG, and we can see that ST segment uh, depression. So it's not following that isoelectric line, it's way, well below. Now, another important thing we need to know about ECGs is how to localize the site of infarction. So how to know if it, it is a heart attack happening in the inferior portion of the heart or anterior or lateral portion of the heart. And essentially, the way an ECG works is we have 12 leads that will show different views of the heart. So this image shows the vectors of an ECG, and you can see here it leads 3, AVF, and 2, showing uh, the inferior portion of the heart. Then, for example, leads AVL and 1, showing more the lateral side of the heart. And then we have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, which show from an anterior portion to going to a lateral portion of the heart. So this is how an ECG is divided. So you have leads 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, and then V1 to V6. And below here, we usually have a reference lead, which tends to be lead 2. Now, if we look at this uh, image here, it shows essentially how it is divided. So leads 2, 3, and AVF, right here, 2, 3, and AVF, show an inferior view of the heart. So if we see an ST segment elevation in leads 2, 3, and AVF, we know it is a heart attack in the inferior portion of the heart, and so on. So 2, 3, AVF is inferior, 1, AVL, V5, and V6 is lateral, uh, V3 and V4 show anterior, particularly more to uh, uh, the apex of the heart, and then V1 and V2 is also anterior, but, but more focused on that septum. Now, if we know the region of the heart that is suffering a heart attack, um, so suffering ischemic damage, we are likely to know which artery is affected. So if we're looking, for example, at the inferior border of the heart, so leads 2, 3, and AVF, that is the inferior border right there, we can see that it is mainly supplied by the right coronary artery. So if we have a heart attack happening, in these lead, uh, at these leads, um, we can know that the artery that is most likely affected is the right coronary artery. So there might be a blockage in that artery. Now, if we see um, a blockage there in leads one in AVL, that uh, in AVL that show the lateral side of the heart, that is most likely to be the left circumflex artery. As we can see here, the left circumflex going to the lateral portion of the heart. Now, V1 and V2 uh, show more the septum of the heart, and that is most likely a left anterior descending uh, blockage, so the left anterior descending here. V3 and V4 show also the anterior side of the heart, but more the apex of the heart, and that is likely to be the distal left anterior descending, so more of this distal portion. Um, V5 and V6, that shows more an anterior lateral aspect of the heart, and that can be either the left anterior descending or left circumflex artery. So based on what we just talked, here's a question. In this ECG, is, it, is the person suffering from a STEMI, a STEMI, 
And where in the heart is it? Is it the anterior, inferior, or lateral portion? Uh, feel free to pause the video to think of your answer. So this right here shows an anterior STEMI, so an ST segment elevation myocardial infarction in the anterior portion of the heart. So if we look at leads V2, V3, and V4, we have a clear ST segment elevation. So we see here and there we have the QRS complex, and then it doesn't return back to that baseline. So the ST segment is well elevated, especially here in V2. There's also on V4 and uh, to a slight degree there on V5. And so that is the anterior aspect of the heart. And so with that being said, which artery is most likely to be affected here? If you're thinking of the left anterior descending, then you are correct. Since a heart attack is a life-threatening emergency, it is important to know when someone is having one. So the symptoms of a heart attack are a tight, crushing chest pain that can radiate to the neck, jaw, arms, and back, shortness of breath, weakness and lightheadedness, and an overwhelming feeling of anxiety, which can be described in some textbooks as an impending sense of doom. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, we talked about heart attacks and how to localize them on an ECG. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more.